All right, so we're in our final video for FTE uh, 211, which is going to be the 1911 Advanced Armors uh, course. So for our final video, it's a uh, four-part assignment. Um, for part number one, uh, we, we don't have any firearms in the work area today, so uh, as far as safety goes, it's a safe environment. Um, in part number one, we're going to reflect on our interaction with the instructor and fellow classmates throughout this course and share some insights that we have gained during these interactions. So it's an online course. I, I don't know how much to say about that. Uh, the interaction with the class has been for the purpose of discussion posts. Um, there's been some good comments, some good thoughts. Uh, posted throughout the class, but as far as true interaction goes, uh, I, I don't have anything to speak on for that. Um, the the discussion posts were very limited, and it's a homework assignment, so it's it's not just general conversation for me. Um, step number two is comparing the guidance that I have received in this course and the guidance offered by other uh, recognized expert, experts in the field, did I find any discrepancies? Discrepancies. So not really. Um, this course has been my favorite course so far in the uh, SDI program. The rest of the courses have filled my hours with reading and papers. Um, the practice and the functional part of this course has been great. Um, so the I've I've read the lectures, went through the lectures, watched the videos, and then uh, I've also went on to YouTube and watched some videos from uh, people like Mark Novak and his uh, Anvil Gunsmithing channel, Iraq Veteran uh, eighty eight eighty eight. Um, these other gunsmiths that are working on these weapons online and there's not a big deviation in, in what they talk about especially um, when it comes to making the trigger better um, I'm not gonna sit here and say you could pick up a Rock Island or a Tesis and you can make it as good as a uh, custom 1911 but you can really, uh, I learned in this course, you can really make a 1911 feel really good. Um, even when you first get it and it feels like crap. <clears throat> so part number three, uh, when gunsmithing, is there only one way to skin a cat or can there be multiple ways to accomplish this cat or this task? Uh, there's never only one way to skin a cat. There's, sometimes there's a best practice but no matter how you do something, you can still find your way to the end. Um, but cutting out unnecessary steps and stuff like that. So whereas I'll never agree that there's only one way to skin a cat, I do, uh, I do agree that there can be a best or a more efficient way to do things. Um, there are steps and there's tasks in this course, uh, like polishing the sear and the hammer um there there's steps that i followed and there's stuff that i didn't uh when it came to polishing the feed ramp i completely uh foregoed some steps i refused to use uh the polish that they gave us and i chose to use uh some of my rouge and and use that to really uh work on polishing these things and I got a better outcome so uh, I had that stuff I understand SDI sending us what they sent us it's a quick way to work on a gun and for part number four what future education and training will you pursue to continue your understanding of, of important gunsmithing principles uh, one big thing I'm going to continue to do is take on new projects and do things that I never thought I would. Uh, I've done parkerizing. I've done uh, slow rust bluing. I have 
reshaped uh, metal components that I never thought I would. Um, and that's from material in this course and outside. One thing I'll tell you I'll never continue my education on and that's checkering.